كاين تشات جينيرال ديسكاشن غنهضروا فيه وحنا ايضا غادي نبارطاجيو معكم معلومات اللي هي مهمه منهم دي زادريس ايميل ولا دي زادريس دي زادريس الكترو دي زادريس ايميل شمش ما مولفش على برا والهواء النقي بحال هكا المهم كنكون في البيت ديالي نتمنى ان ايضا نتوما كتستمتعوا بالرفع ديال الحجر الصحي وكتحافظوا على الاحترازات الصحيه كاين الكويشن كويشن تاب اللي هي مخصصه للاسئله اللي عندكم شي سؤال الله يخليكم طرحوه في الكويشن تاب كيمكننا اننا نوصلوا للكويشن ديالكم Uh, more efficiently and more rapidly and we can answer all of them. If you have any questions, you can go to the question tab and you can upvote it so that you can see it in the class. There is also the polls tab, which is the third tab of experienceay.com and you can go to the next question and see you in this live and see you in the comments so that you can see you in the comments and see you in the community and see you in the community and where you want to تمشيو في جامعة الاخوان وطيله هذا الويبينار وكما اقتدت العاده ولا بد غادي تربحوا معنا دي سويتشيرت ديال جامعه الاخوان كما كتشوفوا على الصوره مرتديها خيري آه واحد من طلبات جامعه الاخوان غادي نربحكم بزاف ديال لي سويتشيرت الطريقه سهله بزاف تركزوا معنا طوال هذا الويبينار غنطرح عليكم اسئله اللي غادي يجاوب الاول بالجواب الصحيح في التشات تاب هو اللي غادي يفوز بسويتشيرت ذكركم بالله الحلقه السابقه واللي هي كاينه اون ريبلاي على experienceay.com طرقنا فيها الكليات السكول اوف بزنس اند ادمنستريشن هضرنا على الاندر جرادويت بروجرامز او الجرادويت بروجرامز تقدروا تعاودوا تفرجوا فيها اون ريبلاي كنظن انني هضرت على uh, تقريبا uh, كل شيء نسيت شي حاجه باقي غادي نذكرها لكم طوال هذا الويبينار وانا هضرت بزاف وغادي نختم بالبول الاولاني اللي غادي نبداو به اللي هو which program would you be interested in واش spatial planning and management environment Environmental studies and sustainability, uh, human resources and development, communication studies, international studies. Actually, it's human resource development. Uh, الا كان شي بروغرام ما عارفينوش ما تخافوش لان هذه الحلقه مخصصه لاننا نوضحوا لكم كاع هاد لي بروغرام ويمكن تجاوبوا على البول طوال هاد الحلقه. غنبداو بالاندرجراد الاندرجراد بروغرامز الان وغادي نهضروا على الجرادويت بروغرام مع الخمسه اذا ان شاء الله توني توني ان ات 5 فور دي جرادويت بروغرام فاش كنفتحوا الباب ديال كليه هيومانيتيز اند سوشيال ساينسز اول شخص اللي خصنا نتلاقاو به ولا بدا هو لو دوايان الدين اوف سكول اوف هيومانيتيز اند سوشيال ساينسز دين عبد عبد الكريم مرزوق هو از ويز اس توداي لايف هير ات اي او اي ان ذيس Open air. How are you, Dean? <laughs> I'm doing fine. How are you, Steve? I'm doing great. It's so good to be back. I'm not going to do live from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the base of Jelly. We can do it from the واحد المجموعه ديال ديال التخصصات بات وي كان سويتش انجليش احنا في ناحيه اللغه نقدروا نهضروا بالدارجه نهضروا بالانجليزيه اوكي سو دي سكول اوف هيومانيتيز اند سوشيال ساينس از ا سكول ذات تيتشز فورست بيزيكلي ذا ليبرال ارت كومبوننت ات دي ات دي اي واي ات دي اخوين يونيفرسيتي سو ذا ليبرال ارت ايديوكيشن بروجرام اور ايديوكيشن ان جنرال از ان نورث امريكان موديل That's uh, it's a North American model that built on uh, critical thinking, that built on skills that you will need for 21st century for hiring. Mm. Today, if there is someone that will hire you, will hire you because of your skills. It's not because of your degree or your professional degree. So as you're uh, pursuing a program here at the Akhawain, at the School of Humanities and Social Science, you're also uh, learning the foundations of liberal art which mm. is taking classes different classes in science in humanities and also in social science like you know psychology geography sociology anthropology etc you will learn also in math you will be taking classes in math in physics in biology and also uh, classes in humanities like uh, you know like arts for example and political science so that's what makes the school uh, very strong because you will get what you will not get elsewhere in Morocco in terms of higher education as a graduate or an undergrad uh, student. And that's what makes 
that school totally different from what you have in uh, higher education in Morocco. Dean Marzouk, it's also a school where uh, there is a lot of conversations, a lot of debates, uh, because we're talking about fields that are interesting, uh, where uh, they're really uh, open to discussion. It's not We're not discussing one plus one equal two, but uh, we're looking at the world, how it evolves today, and today maybe even even uh, more than uh, than before with this pandemic or what's, what's happening around the, uh, the world. So it's uh, really a school that uh, um, lead you to open up to to exactly. grasp what's what's going on and also make your own uh have your own point of view your own on view on on, on a subject that matters yeah you're totally right i think today uh in any discipline uh when there is a big problems today that we're dealing with like climate change like migration mm. issues that you cannot tackle from only the science point of view mm. but it's where you have a phenomena that's more complex there are more valuable that's in there. There are more uh, critical thinkers so that you can not only absorb information, but you need to rethink mm. and remodel and then take it from different windows so that you can think of. And this, that's what the liberal art teach you. Exactly. It teach you not to absorb information, not to be a consumer, but it needs you to be an innovator. You need tells you how to be a, a better communicator mm. than how to convince people. Mm. That's very important in debates, in public debate, in political science debate, in uh, competitions. That's where uh, our students, we usually rank, you know, uh, first in those uh, debates. أنا دين مرزوق بقى كنا هنضرب على بزاف جل تخصصات اللي كاس كشرحهم ال الكلية. بقي كيما طرقنا الكلية السابقة سو سكول اوف بيزنس ولا سكول اوف ساينس اند انجينيرينغ كي هاد الليبرال ارت كيف تحل المجال الانسان انه من غير تخصص ديالو كي ياخد مواد اخرى ويدان مواد كان في كلية اخرى اللي بغي نفتح على مواضيع اخرى واللي كتدخل في فورماسيون ديالو واللي كتخلي انا كيما قلتي يكون عنده the most amount of skill and knowledge to be an efficient uh, person in the future. Exactly. I think we at the school we offer, as my colleagues will talk about, you know, uh, so we offer five undergraduate program. Yes. And then five grad program. All of them are rooted in social science, although it's School of Humanities and Social Science, but the main component of the programs are in social science, mm. but humanities is as a support to those uh, classes. That's what gives you know, our components and any student at AUI will cross, will go through our school and then will at least, you know, uh, take 30% of classes at our school. So uh, we talked about the uh, liberal art education. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are watching us now live, uh, it's time for our second poll. Did you understand what a liberal uh, art education is? Yes or no? If no, then we're going to try and explain it throughout uh, the, this uh, webinar. And I think that most uh, professors are going to come here and talk about uh, different uh, programs that are uh, proposed in this school. They will talk about them also uh, Dean Marzouk thank you very much for being with us today thank you see you sir my pleasure شكرا لك بزاف غادي نمروا الان للضيف الثاني اللي غيكون معايا واللي غادي يهضر لنا على Bachelor of Science in Spatial Planning and Management it's Dr Eric Ross Dr Ross very nice to have you with us well good afternoon it's a pleasure Pleasure to have you with us, especially that uh, today it's uh, it's a really interesting time also because uh, most of the students who are watching us uh, in this webinar have to prepare also for their uh, baccalaureate exam. So wish we wish them, them well. good luck. Yes, yeah. I do. There's nothing like uh, hard work, uh, especially like I know that today maybe staying at home, given the circumstances, you need maybe a little more courage, but also a lot of focus. So wish them all the best of luck. Dr. Ross, uh, we're going to start with the, the Bachelor of Science in Spatial Planning and Management. Can you just debunk this and let me understand what it is about? <laughs> Well, okay. I'm very, uh, we're actually quite excited about it because like most of our other programs, it's interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary. And what it does is that it conjoins various social sciences, uh, uh, particularly geography with uh, management skills and project management skills, mm -hmm. uh, aiming at uh, sectors like urban and regional uh, planning but also resource management, uh, hmm. managing forests, managing fisheries, et cetera. So we're talking basically like how to manage, when we talk about urbanism, we're talking about how to manage a city, how to think better a city, how to think a city in the future, not at the time where it's uh, established, especially that now there are 
concerns about uh, you know the environment and we're talking about resources also to maximize maybe the uh, the, the the resources um, how, how to maximize uh, resources without maybe harming the planet too right well it's like it's like uh, Dean Marzouk just said 10 mm. minutes ago uh, things are complicated yeah <laughs> and uh, rather than uh, pretending things are simple with simple solutions we uh, we accept the complexity and uncertainty of the solutions on mm. offer and uh, a, a lot of our, this program is very hands-on mm -hmm. it's a laboratory work with uh, real data and simulations it's a lot of uh, data collection in the field as well mm. and uh, students get to master the tools of uh, geography in particular mm. geographic uh, information systems and remote sensing, satellite imagery interpretation. And these are skills that they can take anywhere. Mm. So the uh, prospective job market, if you like, is certainly not limited to, uh, to Morocco. The tools are valid everywhere. The problems are pretty much common, though the solutions will have to be, uh, be crafted individually for each case. Mm. But uh, what we're planning with this uh, program is, to, is for students to master a range of tools which they can then take to real real life problems everywhere there there are opportunities i'm i'm guessing for work uh, uh, in in uh, non-profit in the government especially that uh, as we have been saying throughout the series of webinar al khawain is a public institution so the so so the degree is a, is a public degree and it gives you access to all you know public uh, job opportunities in well, public sector yes uh, if you look at the public sector clearly urban uh, urban planning regional planning territorial planning these are in the jurisdiction of public agencies mm -hmm. usually at the local or regional scale and with the advanced uh, regionalization process in morocco there's increasing um uh, need at the local scale for uh people able to mm -hmm. deal with planning issues and resource management issues uh in the private sector, well, there's all the uh, corporations that are resource-based, uh, as well as transportation and communications um, corporations that also have to plan territorially. They need yeah. a spatial dimension to, uh, to their activities and their expansion. And so the students in our program will be entering uh, those kinds of, those kinds of uh, in, in, in employments. That sounds really interesting, especially that, that you when you when you talked about it, you talked about uh, a case study dealing with real data, with real life situation during the the program. It's not just theory; it's lo also a lot of, uh, of of practice. Like all our programs, uh, the program includes uh, a professional internship. It in, uh, includes a uh, individual uh, research based capstone project, mm. and so these kinds of exercises are there to. Uh, make our students more uh, able to operate independently. Yeah. So they acquire these skills and then when they reach the workplace, they already have a, uh, a manner of working. Well, I hope uh, the graduates will have a serious look at uh, the city of Casablanca, the city where I live, because it needs some uh, planning. <laughs> Casablanca <laughs> has needed planning since it started. Exactly. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Ross, All for right. sharing uh, with us um, and uh, we're going to check the polls uh, right now uh, to see uh, when we talked about the uh, first programs that you guys are interested in. Uh, I'm happy to say that I have some light on my screen and it's difficult for me to see. It means I'm outside and I'm happy to be outside. So uh, we're talking about um, which program would you be interested in? Communication studies is a big one. International studies is uh, a big one. We're talking about liberal art. Uh, 10 people, 59% uh, understood uh, the what uh, liberal arts education mean, but uh, there are a lot of people who don't. Maybe a short okay. sentence on this. Yes, I can explain liberal arts. Um, liberal arts is a s philosophy of education mm. that uh, understands education to be holistic and that understands especially that the first degree mm. at a university ought to be a generalist degree that allows every individual to understand the few, the full range of human experiences mm. from philosophy and literature to physics, chemistry and biology and everything in between. Yeah. Now, obviously, we can't offer 
everything to every student. Yeah. But every student, no matter what they're studying at this university, every student will uh, taste a little bit of the physical sciences, a little bit of the humanities, a little bit of the social sciences, et cetera. Why? Because things being complicated and uh, these different disciplines we teach, we teach them separately, but we know they're not separate things. They're connected to each other. And the strength of our students are their ability to see the interconnectedness of things. That is what liberal arts does. So it's integrated into all our programs. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ross, uh, for uh, for jump for explaining uh, to us uh, this uh, this program. And uh, maybe it's time for us to see if you guys are focused with us in this webinar because it's time for the first prize and the first question of the quiz. Uh, first question is going to be: How many social sciences bachelor's program are there at AUI? So, first to have a right answer on the uh, on the chat tab will win the sweatshirt. I'm see there is a lot of answers already thank you all for interacting with us so it's adam who won the first sweatshirt adam or adam 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 i was going to adam because i'm talking in english today hi so it's time for my next uh, guest and uh, it's uh, dr khadija darman who's going to talk to us about the bachelor of science in environmental studies and sustainability i'm going to get it get it right one day, one day. sustainability yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. It's so so good to 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 see you, Dr. Darman. We had the time to chat a little bit before yes. uh, the live, and it, there's a lot of interesting things we could learn about the environmental study, especially today. And we talk about su sustainability. Exactly. Uh, it's yeah. it, it, it seems like it's the the the, the topic of 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 today okay. of this generation. Exactly. So as you know, the new generation uh, can play really a crucial role protecting environment, changing attitudes, uh, making pressure on government yeah. to, to change policies. And uh, you can be part of this change um, by becoming a professional expert in environmental studies and sustainability um, because the need for uh, qualified people uh, with this background is huge from public to private sector, from uh, uh, local level to global level as well. Mm. And uh, this is why our program is very special and is the right one for them. Because it's, um, first of all, uh, it's up to date with the current thinking in the field uh, of the environment in terms of understanding issues, uh, complexity, finding, sol finding solutions. Also, um, our program, um, it fills the gap between engineering and social sciences yeah. program. So you will have climatology, hydrology, you will have environmental science, GIS, but meanwhile, you will get courses in um, environment policies and laws, global politics of water, environment and uh, environmental economics. So as you can see, you have a, a really a solid theoretical background and meanwhile you will have really a practical experiences. The last point regarding also our university is the right one because we are the, on the first and the only university in Morocco to offer a program uh, with this background for undergraduate students. Yeah. And we are also, the, um, for the two new programs, uh, we offer scholarships for environmental studies and sustainability and for urban planning as well. So you will be rewarded if you select us. So it's, um, <laughs> it's really interesting because we're talking about a, a main issue today but yes. also because when we talk about uh there are ch changes that also in policies that happens every day yes. so uh you, uh in this in this program you are also aware of like everything that's going on in the world everything that is yes. going on right now sorry i didn't trigger one sorry i was i was talking about the fact that there are a lot of changes in policies today maybe just a change in the leadership in some countries can change shift the view of a whole country Definitely. toward the environment so and and i i believe like it's a lively discussion every day in this particular program because there's so many things that are happening right exactly. now. Exactly. So we are really talking about a very, very uh, crucial problem. This challenge really uh, is faced by all countries and I'm sure the young generation, they want really to impact positively about their future by not only being activists, but also by being professionals. 
So I think really uh, by combining this uh, in this program, theoretic, solid theoretical background, practical uh, uh, experiences, the, uh, their passion as well hmm. with the good academic advising, I am sure they will really find plenty of job opportunities. Talking about job opportunities, yes. uh, doctor, there. Uh, the, if if I undergo this program, what can I what can I hope for in the future? For especially for undergrads, where where can they land? Is it all NGOs or is there? No, okay. no, no. As I said from the beginning, it's from public to private sector, from yeah. governments, corporations, NGOs, international organizations, and uh, at different level because governments or companies now, they have to include this component in their project. Yeah. They have to respect the environment. And we have a guest, uh, uh, Mr. Zakaria Bisha, who is an uh, environmental uh, consultant. He's, he worked a lot uh, in this field. So maybe we will have more details from him. Yes, let's let's hear uh, Zakaria Brisha, who is an engineer yes. in environmental science and who recorded this video for us. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, that was the uh, overview of the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies and Sustainability. Uh, maybe just to remind you that it's Nada actually who won the sweatshirt and not uh, Adam as I announced uh, before. But anyway, all the information you're going to find on the chat tab. Time for the second question. I hope that you are ready. And the question is, which program can allow you to become a climate change analyst? Is it a Bachelor of Science in Spatial Planning and Management or is it a Bachelor of Science in Env Environmental Studies and sustainability well actually those questions are pretty simple if you've been paying attention since the beginning of this uh webinar you can answer on the chat uh section and uh i think we already have a winner that's going to be announced on the chat question it's time for me to announce my uh, next uh, guest dr uh, smita kumar who's going to talk to us about the bachelor of science in human resource development it's always a singular human resource development. Dr. Kumar, nice to see you. Same here. It's lovely to be here. So we've been talking about uh, environment, sustainability, geography. We're talking about spatial planning. Now we're talking about human beings. Yes. So can you just tell us a little bit more about the human resource development? So as I think over the last couple of decades, we've been seeing that human resource development or HRD yeah. has become very relevant and very essential in organizations, whether we are talking about private sector, whether we are talking about public sector, NGOs, international organizations. And it starts with recruitment as the basic function that when you hire people, when they join, starting to managing their performance, their learning, and then moving on to as they decide to advance in their careers or they leave organization, whichever way it is. So from the beginning to the end, their entire life cycle within the organization is looked after by the human resource professional. What, what kind of, of, of subject, what kind of uh, classes do we mm -hmm. take in order to master or understand this whole process? 
There are several, and because it is one of the rare programs where we offer this specialization at an undergraduate level, yeah. usually it is done at a master's level. But AUI has a special program which is unique in itself. So we really provide starting from very basic, for example, introduction to HRD, yeah. which is something that the students will get. And it's a course that a lot of students, even though they are not specializing in HRD, they are taking that course. And so you start with what is HRD, giving an overview, to moving on to specialized areas like strategic HRD, yeah. training and development, consulting, global HRD, and leadership. So these are some of the key concentration areas, but there are numerous other courses that the student will experience once they are taking this course or they decide to major in mm. this. I think uh, in this case, particularly when talk, we were talking about human resource development, the question is not even to be asked about like career opportunities because it's, it, it, it seems so obvious, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Yes. And uh, so in terms of career opportunities, that was a good question. You can start from any sector and the jobs would be more like you become either a generalist in HR and you're working in an organization or you become a specialist in talent management, talent acquisition, training and development. Uh, some of them who really like coaching and working with people in the learning space, then they become coaches. Mm. Um, there are also opportunities where you can join an HRD consulting firm. You can start your own consulting firm. Um, you can be part of large multinationals, whether here in Morocco or overseas. We also have a lot of students from our course who go overseas to do their masters. Mm. So they may specialize in one aspect of HRD. Yeah. And they will pick that and they will go ahead and do their um for the studies abroad and uh, as we say the the, the purpose a uh, little bit of the undergrad uh, program is for you to grasp a little bit of everything mm -hmm. and to, to to have this uh, large uh, array of skills uh, that makes you able to maybe choose better where you want to be a professional when you want to when you want to work or pick up uh, a, 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 spe a specialization for right. for a, for a, for a graduate program mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. And and the interesting thing that I wanted to highlight there is we need to remember that this is a professional course. So just providing theoretical background is not sufficient. And mm. we understand that the students that we get, they don't have prior work experience. So they don't have an idea of how an organization operates, how people issues come up. So to address that, uh, we have a very interesting faculty, full time faculty base, which is international faculty, and they have experience and background in Moroccan context as well as overseas. Plus, they have extensive work experience as HR professionals mm. or in consulting. So they bring that breadth of experience to provide real life experience to students through project works, through case studies, through visits to different field trips yeah. to organizations, and also inviting guest speakers, sometimes Moroccan, sometimes overseas. Um, they could be just virtual sessions or they may come here in person. So that really gives them a breadth of experience and how it would be in a real life situation. And I'm, I've been hearing lately, like when we talk uh, about the job market, this new position of uh, happiness management, <laughs> you've heard of it, right? Yes, yes. So it, it also means maybe that um, the, uh, the, the field also is, is voting with innovation. And mm -hmm. sometimes maybe the discussion, I think, in the undergrad uh, level, give us a, a view of what kind of uh, development you could, it could, we could have in the, mm -hmm. in the field of uh, human resource development. That's a very interesting point that you mentioned. And I think um, it is no surprise that we have reached that point because like any other field or function, you have to constantly innovate and be relevant. And yeah. I'll talk about a little bit in terms of the COVID situation, how HR has really stepped up. Yeah. But just to talk about the happiness manager, I think um, it really comes from a perspective that now employees are increasingly invested in organizations. It is no more nine to five job where you go away and life switches off, work switches off, you're working from home, you're working in virtual setups, you're, you're traveling. All the time. Exactly. And so if organizations are realizing that employees are extensions of your workspace as well as your organization where you need to take care of their well being. Yeah. And well being doesn't mean just paying their salary. Exactly. Just making sure that they have a good workplace. That's not enough. You have to really invest in their development and their happiness. And so that's the reason why those kind of opportunities are coming up. But just to give you um, the changes that HRD is seeing with 
the COVID-19 coming yeah. up, as around the world, we've seen everybody has to suddenly now work from home. Yeah. What does it mean? How are employees working? Does everybody have, does everyone has the opportunity to work from home successfully? Uh, what can HR do in terms of their performance? Because now there is no manager, no team member watching over you, whether you're working or not working. Yeah. So who takes care of their performance? How do you manage? Because we are also hearing issues that there are some employees who are working way too much. Yeah. And so how does that impact on their well-being? Exactly. Because it is not a sprint. You're not running 100 meters. It's a marathon. We've been in this and we will be in this for some more time. So you want your employees to be healthy and be able to sustain that. The leadership has to change now. You have to be a leader virtually. Yesterday you were in person, but now that's changed. Yeah. How are you taking care of the learning of the employees? Are they able to learn online? Is that helping or is that not? So there are a lot of things a lot that organizations uh, that makes uh, the, the the program even more interesting for prospect students who would like to dive in uh, the this area of human resource development. Dr. Kumar, thank you very much for your time. There's a, it's it's a little bit windy, and I hope that you guys can hear us uh, fine. Thank you very much, uh, thank Dr. You. Kumar. Um, now we're gonna talk about uh, another program. It's the Bachelor of Arts in communication studies and I'm happy to have with me Professor Noelia uh, Santos. Hi. Hello Professor. How are you? I'm good and you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, talking about a uh, Bachelor of Arts in communication studies. Well I have a slight idea of what it might be, but sure. I'm pretty sure you're going to give us more details. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, the Bachelor of Arts in Communication Studies is a really exciting program in which you um, gain a variety of critical and creative skills in all sorts of fields of communications from PR and marketing to uh, print and digital design to yeah. filmmaking, uh, media theory, and so on. Uh, we offer two concentrations, so uh, communication studies students can uh, concentrate in strategic communication in which they study PR, marketing, organizational communication. Um, they can also take a media production track, which is my area, filmmaking. Yeah. Um, all communication studies students culminate their, their four years uh, of study in a creative capstone project in which they can do a, either a short documentary film, an integrated marketing campaign, a digital design project, or a media analysis research project. So it's a very exciting area um, in which, um, yeah, it's it's a program that's been growing and, and really evolving in the last few years. So there, there, we're talking about uh, visual uh, visual art and we're talking about uh, making documentaries and, and movies, mm -hmm. especially I think in this time, uh, Professor, where maybe technology have stepped up and became more and more affordable and mm -hmm. where the storytelling is absolutely more important than than maybe the means or mm -hmm. or, 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 or the gear, as we uh, as we call it. But yeah. The, in this program, you have a full array of, of assets to, to give to students the, um, the, the possibility of make, making their project real. Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, uh, great facilities and resources available to students in the communications program. We have uh, dedicated lab classrooms in which um, there are uh, Macintosh and PC computers uh, with Adobe Creative Suite software. Yeah, we're looking at we're looking at it uh, right now on, mm -hmm. on, on the screen. Yeah, we have some nice new spaces for that. We also have uh, equipment resources, including camcorders, DSLR cameras, professional microphones, and other accessories. Uh, also, the, one of our biggest resources is really, honestly, the faculty and yeah. the industry contacts that the faculty bring to the program. For example, in those senior capstone projects, most of those projects, you're working with real world clients or uh, industry leaders uh, to craft uh, projects and campaigns that can actually be implemented in the real world or have uh, a, a life outside of AUI. So they, those projects provide a nice portfolio piece for our graduating students in order to get into graduate school, a yeah. uh, good graduate program, or to find work in the industry. So uh, so we try to create a lot of uh, interaction through our teaching, as you said 
focusing on story, focusing on the things that are common among all of those different communications fields so that our people are well prepared for their future after the program. And uh, also, like uh, when we're talking about a uh, liberal art type of study, and we have been mentioning this since the beginning of these webinars, the opportunity that the university gives students to be involved in extracurricular activities or uh, mm -hmm. activities outside of the the classroom, which mm -hmm. actually may be the opportunity for them to uh, to try what they are learning uh, in class. And maybe in in your case, it's more uh, vivid of an example because mm -hmm. uh, there is a film festival that takes place here, and there's uh, uh, all this process of uh, learning also from uh, maybe other schools, other creative or other content creator to be up to date and keep this uh, program always up to date with what's going on locally, but also globally. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, you know, we're constantly pursuing different partnerships with other institutions in Morocco. We've had a very um, exciting partnership with uh, L'Ecole Supérieure des Arts Visuelles in yeah. uh, Marrakech. And um, we've also done like I said, a number of uh, senior capstone projects have created um, integrated marketing campaigns for major clients that are in the industry and out in uh, the field, yeah. which reminds me to talk a little bit about the career opportunities that people can encounter when they come out of our program. Uh, you, you might find that the skills and the knowledge you learn in this uh, program, in addition to the um, extracurricular work you'll be doing, will uh, prepare you for communications departments in uh, the public sector, but also private companies such as digital media yeah. agencies, uh, marketing agencies, um, NGOs, government institutions, and so on. So there's a lot of uh, applicability that you'll find in how we've designed our teaching to correspond to what you will encounter once you graduate. Especially like uh, today, communication is not no, no more an option or luxury, it's mm. a necessity. Mm -hmm. Every institution, every organization needs to have a clear way of communicating throughout the platforms that are available to us That's and right. they are growing by the day. Definitely. When we talk about social media, it's a large basket where yeah. different platforms are different types of communication into them. So it's a really exciting field, I'm yes. guessing, professor and uh, yeah. students can be like a both way uh, also conversation because there are users and heavy users of all this uh, communication platforms. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Flexibility, being able to, uh, and I think that's where the, the liberal arts kind of model that integrate, that um, is the basis of all of our programs here really comes in handy because you're coming out with a degree in communication studies or in HRD or in international studies or whatever the focus is. Yeah. But you have a sense of how all of these things work together uh, in which, uh, which allows you to be ready to be a problem solver, a creative thinker, someone who is an innovator in a field um, because you're not tied down by just these one, these particular tools or these particular uh, concepts or ideas, you have those you have those skills as a basis, but you're uh, trying to integrate and uh, build on those constantly through your studies. So, uh, the, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Santos, you talked about uh, career opportunities uh, mm -hmm. uh, for for for, uh, for for this particular program, but mm -hmm. we would like to hear also maybe from one of the uh, graduates, and we're gonna talk to uh, we're gonna watch. Uh, oh no, we're telling you, we're telling you we're not gonna watch uh, <laughs> anything. So no, no problem. Maybe we're gonna have videos of uh, people who are uh, who went through the program mm -hmm. later on experience AUI. Uh, it comes the first time we're doing it outside, mm -hmm. so we have yeah. maybe sometimes some uh, uh, technical difficulties. We need to communicate about that, right? Oh, well, that's right. fine. Fresh air is good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, my next uh, guest, and before having my next uh, guest, which is uh, Dr. Francis Lusto Williams, who's going to talk about Bachelor of Science in International Studies. I'm going to let her just uh, sit comfortably because it's time for another quiz and it's time for another sweatshirt to win. The quiz, uh, the question is uh, really simple. In which program would you take a class in talent acquisition? Is it environmental studies and sustainability, international studies, or human resources and development? Human resource development. So which one of these three? You first want to answer on the chat section will be the winner. And I think we already have a winner. 
In which program would you take a class in talent acquisition? Yes, it's Matthew who won the AOI sweatshirt. Congratulations, uh, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, we can clap. We have, a, we have people actually. That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> Dr. Francis Lusto Williams, you're going to talk about the Bachelor of Science in International Studies. Well, first of all, hello and welcome. Hello. <laughs> so uh, it's a really interesting uh, field. We're going to talk about it uh, right now. It's the undergrad program. What does it include? Okay, so you've heard about a number of issues already. We've talked about environmental sustainability, communications, and, and we have a lot on our minds, COVID-19, and there are a lot of things that, are the, that we're talking about now. There's a global context to yeah. all of these issues that we're dealing with, and, and that's really important. I don't have to tell you that Morocco is, we've got a foot in Africa, we've got a foot in the Middle East, we've got a foot in, in Europe. So uh, our position in the global context and dealing with all of these international issues is really important. So at AUI, I think this is a program that really speaks to our advantages, and that is that it's, uh, it's, it's an, we are a Moroccan institution in the American system, uh, and, and we speak English. So our students come out of here speaking perfect English. They usually have Arabic and French behind them as well. Yeah. And this is a really important skill to go on to uh, the, into the international community with. Beyond just the languages, uh, our students, they learn to think in a different system. We, we, we learn different sets of skills that you don't necessarily find in other, other universities. And that's really important because when uh, we're negotiating between different nations, between different organizations, coming from many different places, navigating different languages, we have to be able to understand how they are thinking, how they're constructing their problems, how they're solving, uh, solving these issues. And our students become really adept at doing that by learning this different system of learning and a, and a different system of thinking. So we have two concentrations. Uh, yeah. We have international relations, and then we have a concentration in international cooperation and development. Uh, we offer classes in a lot of politics, international politics, security studies, uh, development, political economy. It's a lot of economics classes. So it's it's a nice uh, diversity there. Um, but, but, but yeah, in, in general, our students, uh, they place very well. Yeah. They, they get a lot of jobs, uh, uh, in, as a diplomat in the foreign ministry. We, uh, uh, the foreign embassies that are in, in Rabat, they employ a lot of our students, international organizations. Uh, they love our students. Yeah. Uh, I'm just coming from my own personal experience. It's actually very hard to find students with these kinds of skill sets who also have the languages, all of these different languages. And then again, going beyond the languages, uh, just the, the cultural currency, being able to communicate with different types of populations. Dr. Lusto Williams, just yes. because you pointed out a very important thing, you're talking about the English language, because we're talking about mm -hmm. all these concepts, all this uh, set of skills. But actually, English seems to be this global language today uh, that transcends uh, frontiers and make all nations be able to communicate. The opportunity also may be here at the universities to meet with people from different backgrounds, coming from different cultures and countries. We're not talking about just North America, we're talking about Asia, Africa, Europe. And this also may create a very a positive environment to change, to, to discuss about ideas because university is a place of discussion, of uh, exchange. and. Yeah, yeah, and we have we have lots of discussions. So as uh, Arzine was was talking about earlier, it's, it's much more about critical thinking and analysis. So we talk about these really important issues that that are on the uh, in the global context, and uh, and yeah, and our classes are often made up with people from all over the world. Uh, who are coming from different backgrounds. It gets heat, heat up a little bit in classes sometimes. All the time, <laughs> absolutely. It has to. <laughs> yeah, but that's what's kind of exciting about al is that we do ask questions. We ask a lot of questions. And uh, and our students, they're very brave, and, and they, they ask hard questions. And, and in the social sciences in general, we deal with complexity. It, yeah. We're not dealing with necessarily technical issues. We have that technical side, but we're also dealing with... Uh, with a lot of complex issues and environmental sustainability, COVID-19, all of these, there's the technical side to it, but there's also 
the social side to it as as well. And uh, you were talking uh, about um, career opportunities. You're talking about uh, uh, representation of, uh, of countries. You're talking about uh, uh, the government. But today, understanding international relations uh, uh, relations between countries and between talking about the the maybe laws. We're talking about uh, uh, we're talking about uh, social uh, social life. Understanding all those as aspects are not just open for those like obvious uh, places where we think people might work. There are other places where. Uh, Today, companies need more than ever specialists in international yeah. relations because as they go global, as the, the world becomes a yep. smaller village, we need to understand all of these aspects. Yeah, so increasingly everything that we're dealing with has a global perspective to it. So even if you're working uh, in the, the private sector or the corporate sector, you have to develop these the skill set to be able to interact with people who are not coming from the same background that necessarily you are. So that, that has a linguistic component to it, but it also has... Uh, just understanding where these people are coming from. So, yeah, so people, so we work in the, our students work in the government sector, public sector. They work in the private sector. Uh, uh, they get jobs in NGOs. Uh, yeah, they they place very well because typically the the pay scale is linked to the international pay scale, yeah. and that that's a salary that goes a lot further uh, in that, Morocco. That's a marketing <laughs> argument. That's it a really good is. Argument. No, it's it's very easy to find uh, IS students who have done quite well for themselves, and to, probably a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of uh, trips around the world. And going to see uh, different cultures. Oh, and yeah. So it might be really exciting. Yes, they have much more exciting lives than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, I would just uh, would like to come back to our our polls because we've uh, we've been talking about liberal art education uh, and uh, Dr. Ross also gave us a, a brief uh, explanation of the liberal arts uh, education. I'm looking at the polls and actually we got it pretty. Uh, it's like more or less 40% who still don't grasp maybe the liberal art education. What would you say are the main uh, advantages of liberal art education? So I usually describe it as a as a diversified approach to learning, and uh, and even with my students, we talk about being able to uh, you know so much of learning is about reproducing knowledge, and uh, we go beyond just reproducing knowledge, but actually um, not just critiquing information as our dean talked about it's not just uh knowing what numbers are good and what numbers are bad but even creating our own information and so creating our own discussions and our own dialogues and to be able to do that you need to have uh, many different reference points we're not just here just to teach a skill set and kind of move on uh, we're we're here to teach many different ways of looking at problems so this is why in the liberal arts uh system there's a lot of discussion. There's a lot of just putting a problem on the table and looking at it, picking it apart from every angle that you possibly can. And so that that goes uh, that goes beyond uh, just looking at it in technical terms. Mm. And just to just to cite one of my professors, uh, he would say, you know, it's not rocket science. Rocket science is easy because <laughs> you're dealing with a linear problem. You're dealing with mathematical equations. When we're dealing with the, the social context, we're dealing with complexity. And so navigating complexity, uh, you have to have a diversified background. So sure. we're teaching our students to think for themselves, yeah. uh, not just uh, consume uh, information and then put it out there. So and that's really important. We're not we're not going to survive if we if we can't. Uh, get students to and it give us also a lot of uh, independence because uh, if we're really uh, if if we we learn only only sometimes uh, some types of problems then if we don't see the problems that look like them then we freak out but actually in the liberal art we and we learn how to deal with different problems that may come who would yeah. have thought about COVID-19 maybe a few years ago and the mm -hmm. impact of a lockdown and everything so yeah it's uh, maybe this gives us a lot of independence as human beings Absolutely. coming through an undergrad program to become a better problem solvers so I have I have uh, I'm teaching sociology right now and I have engineering students and business students that are in my sociology class who probably never imagined that they would be having to learn 
uh, what sociologists have to say about our world. But we sit there and we talk about these are some of the things that you're going to have to navigate as an engineer, as an engineer. There's always a social component to that. And they're, they've never had to read these kinds of texts before or yeah. think like this. And uh, and it's really enlightening. And so they, they're not going to become sociologists, but it do, is going to change the way they they look at the world and look at the social environment. And so that diversified learning, it, it's also just interesting. You discover things yeah. that you didn't know. I, I had to take, when I was an undergrad, I had to take astronomy. And I was really mad that I had to take astronomy because what am I ever going to do with astronomy? Yeah. But I had to take it. And I loved it. And to this day, I still it's still an interest of, of mine. So even if it's not something that that necessarily works to your that lends itself to a, a career afterwards, uh, it's about becoming uh, developing a sense uh, sort of your intellectual self. Exactly. Um, Thank you. Very well put. I think now it's really clear for all uh, people what we mean by the liberal art type of, uh, of, of education. Thank you very much, Dr. Francis Lusto Williams, for uh, for telling us a lot more about the Bachelor of Science in International uh, Studies. Uh, talk about the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. But before moving on, I would like to come back to Zakaria Abrisha, who, who was uh, sharing with us uh, his experience as an engineer in environmental Hello, sciences. Everyone. We're going to watch everyone. that video and come back to you. From my own from my own experience, I can say that uh, employers from public and so private no. sectors or from international organizations uh, are seeking out a new generation of experts who came from a well-rounded and multidisciplinary educational backgrounds to solve environmental issues and ensure sustainability uh, in creative ways. Graduate students for, of environmental uh, studies often begin their careers as uh, environmental technicians, uh, junior consultants, research analysts, uh, inspectors, and much more. These professionals can work their way up to uh, supervisory positions over time. I really advise you to be part of the environmental community because the challenges are extremely important. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Mehdi Mantra and I am a member of the class of 2016 from the Communication Studies program at Al Khawain University. Uh, Studying in communication studies at AUI was one of the best decisions that I made. It gave me a really, really uh, diverse and strong education in both theory and practice in communication. In fact, my theory knowledge through that program and through the rigor of a lot of the professors there made it so that my background was really strong when I got to graduate school. And in terms of practice, it gave me a leg up in a lot of different ways. Uh, I had another aspect of the field that I could bring in, and it enabled me to produce things like this poster behind me, which was a theory map of the communication studies field for one of the courses that I took. إذا كانت هذه نهلة بنت فعا كاستمر إكسبيرينس مانجر كما كنا ذكرنا على هذرنا هذرنا مع الأساتذة وعرفون على ذي ديفيرون بروغرام اللي كاينين في سكول اوف هيومانيتيز اند سوشيال ساينسز وكنحاولنا أيضا أننا نتقاسموا معكم التجارب ديال خريجي هذا الكلية والعمل اللي كيديروه الآن باش يعطيكم واحد النظرة ربما ديال الكارير اوبورتونيتيز اللي تقدروا تحصلوا عليهم من بعد التخرج ديالكم من سكول اوف هيومانيتيز اند سوشيال ساينسز انا صراحه ما سخيتش وقاعد لي بروفيسور باسكو الحديث على مواضيع اللي عندها علاقه ديريكت مع لاكتواليتي ومع اللي واقع في العالم والمذاكره تقدر ما تنتهيش نتمنى انكم تتم استمتعتوا بهذا الوقت هذا ولكن قبل ما نتفرقوا كاين عده اشياء اللي خصنا نشوفوها اونصومبل اولا استقاء الراي ديالكم الان انكم شفتوا واحد النظره شموليه ربما على البرامج اللي كتعطيهم كليه الانسانيات والعلوم الاجتماعيه شنو شنو في النظر ديالكم what do you plan to do uh, confirm your application apply to one of these bachelor's program at AUI seek more information about the programs ولا compare these programs at AUI to other national and international program الرد ديالكم سيكون صادق باش يعاوننا حنا نقدروا نيفالوي العمل اللي تنقوموا به في هذا الويبينار through experienceaui.com وكنشكركم جزيل الشكر على التفاعلات ديالكم 
باقي خصنا نربحوا واحد السويت شيرت وكنظن كاين واحد الجمهور كبير من عير الدكاتره اللي غادي يشجعكم باش تفوزوا بهذا الفورت سويت شيرت اند ذا كويشن از فور ذا فورت سويت شيرت ويتش بروجرام هاف ديديكيتد فول تايم faculty specialized specialized in their field which program have dedicated full time faculty specialized in their field is it communication studies human resources and development spatial planning and management or all of them i bet you know the answer and i bet you know the right answer okay so let's uh, have a look at the chat section first one to answer correctly win this fourth sweatshirt As you can see in the picture, uh, beautifully uh, worn by uh, one of uh, AUI students. All right, so we have uh, answers, and uh, we're going to announce what who is the winner. And we're going to clap. <laughs> We're gonna upload. Anyway, thank you very much uh, for paying attention uh, during this uh, undergrad program uh, in the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Just to remind you that uh, in less than uh, in a little bit more than an hour, we're gonna meet at five. And لقوم الخمسة ديال الأشياء باش نفتحوا باب الكلية الإنسانية والعلوم الاجتماعية. يمكن هذه المرة باش نضروا على the graduate program. نضروا على the master's program اللي كتصرحهم الكلية وغادي يكون عندنا لقاء أيضا مع الأساتذة اللي غادي شروا لنا جميع الشعب اللي كاينه في 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 كليه الانسانيات والعلوم الاجتماعيه. وسينو غادي تلقاو ايضا الاحد المقبل على الساعه الثالثه كما اجرت العاده لقاء معكم كنبغي مره اخرى نشكركم على التفاعل ديالكم ونشكركم ايضا على التقييم ديالكم لهذا الويبينار. So if you have any feedbacks, if you have anything you want to share with us, please do. It makes us only uh, improve ourselves and be better. Good luck for all the people who are preparing for the baccalaureate. You can do it if you believe in yourself, and I'm sure you do. Had Saeed lil jamia, and Allah yufqum. تلاقاو من هنا ساعة تقريبا مع الخمسة تخيز اكزاكتومون باش نتعرفو على البروغرام ديال ماستر ديجري سكول اوف يومانيتيز سوشيال ساينسز هذا كان يوسف قصير من الطبيعة برا انا بجميع الاخوين شكرا بزاف ولا لا